Hi, I'm Dr. C, and this is a quick look at self-editing tips on tense and voice. Well, we're going to talk about writing before editing, the past tense, present tense, active voice, and passive voice. I'm sitting there working on some writing at Burning Man in Second Life. <laughs> well, the, the goal here is to write first and get your content down on paper. When you start editing too quickly, it feels like you're driving over speed bumps. It feels like you're in uncertain terrain and it feels very awkward. You will get into an analysis paralysis if you keep doing this when you're supposed to be creating. Now I know what you're thinking. You don't have all the facts. You've forgotten a citation. You're not sure of that reference. Well, leave yourself a little note to get back to it as soon as you get the content down on paper. Breathe life into your work and then go back and edit it. Now for tense, we recommend that you use past tense in your research papers. Here's why. First off, you're citing work that happened in the past. Secondly, almost everything changes. And when the state of knowledge changes, you will be wrong at some point. But if you use past tense in your article, you're, you remain accurate for the point in time when you said it. Here's an example. Let's say you wrote something about Pluto and you described it as a planet. Well, today we think of Pluto as a dwarf planet. Were you wrong when you said it? No. So if you use past tense and you stay clear on the content at the point in time when you wrote it, it will be easier for your audience to understand. If you use present tense or future tense, they will wonder if you're a time traveler and also they'll think that you're wrong. Well, use present tense when you're writing your how to write guide and here's one reason why you might want to do that. You're really trying to collaborate with your reader, your audience, because they are fellow writers. You're describing tips for them to strengthen their work. You're sharing current content and it helps if you use a conspiratorial tone. What do I mean by that? Well, you're conspiring and collaborating on how to strengthen the writing practice. Use active voice to experience the action. Now I want you to look at the images for just a moment. On the left, I've pulled the camera back, almost like a movie where they pull the camera back and you can't quite see the action. You see it from a distance. On the right, it's the same scene, but I've pulled the camera forward. We're very close to the action and we can feel it. Let's look at how it's described in text. On the left, in passive voice, everyone was hugged during the celebration. Well, we have no idea who hugged them. We just know they were hugged. <laughs> so we could obscure some of the facts or the noun could be missing in action in, s in some cases of passive voice. So you want to keep an eye on that. On the right, the friends hugged the celebration. You'll notice there's no linking verb and we know who's doing the hugging. <laughs> well, let's move to the next example. Now there are times when you want to use passive voice, in particular when you need emotional distance. First responders and medical professionals have to do this all the time. And for sensitive topics, mass disasters, medical procedures, surgeries, sometimes passive voice is your friend. But remember, active voice is very engaging and personable and it draws the reader into the content. Passive voice gives them detachment. You don't want your audience to be detached. Why do I emphasize this? because much of technical writing is written in passive voice and it shouldn't be. So keep that in mind. Well, I'm Dr. C and I've given you these self-editing tips. These are only the tip of the iceberg, but they're some of the most important pieces that strengthen your writing. Keep on writing. See you next time. Bye-bye.